Well, it's five o'clock here in the UK, so let's make a start. Um, good morning to those of you on the West Coast. Good afternoon to those of you joining us from the East Coast. And good evening to anyone joining us from Europe or stations further east. And a very warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining this, the 16th of our regular series of short courses on pumping topics. This one will last about 35 to 40 minutes, uh, allowing us plenty of time for a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So let me restart the, the share. Well, here's a listing of the previous um, short courses we've run during the last year. If you've missed any of them, you can get a copy of the materials from our website using the following link. Shortcourses.rawpumpen.com or you can go to www.roarpumpin.com and follow the link to RP Short Courses. Um, they're not all up there yet. I, I think we have up to number 11 is up there and we'll shortly be uploading numbers 12 and 13, I think, um, and later 14 and 15. But if you go to www.roarpumpin.com, you get to this screen and here is the link to the RP short courses. If you click on that, it takes you here to this screen, which you can also access directly using this link. You'll see all the courses that we've uploaded there and you can click on any of them to see the course material and um, download it as necessary. Like I say, we've only done, I think 11 at the moment, we'll get uh, a few more up there soon but we do like to encourage you to actually attend these, uh, these seminars rather than uh, just download them. So this is what we're covering today, the beginner's guide to positive displacement pumps, with a particular focus on reciprocating plunger pumps, which is the type that Royal Pump and manufactures. A one hour session is most certainly not going to turn you into a product expert, especially as I'm not an expert myself in this product line, but it will start you off in the right direction and give you a basic understanding. We'll be holding a Q&A session at the end, so please use the Q&A facility at the bottom of your screen to ask any questions or make any comments. I'll address those that I can live at the end of the session, and the rest will address by mail in the coming days. We are recording this session and we'll make it available to all attendees as a YouTube link, as well as by emailing you a PDF version of the slideshow. And also the Q&A summary from both of today's sessions. The, I had a session this morning for the Eastern Hemisphere and now we have this afternoon session, my time, for the Western Hemisphere. Here's a summary of what we will cover in today's session. Comparison of positive displacement versus centrifugal pumps. We'll answer what is a reciprocating pump. And then we'll look a little at the raw pump and RDP pump, as well as testing and finally package options. So first of all, how it compares with and differs from the centrifugal pump, something that we all understand already. Well, with a centrifugal pump, energy is transferred directly to the liquid, which reacts by moving. With a BD pump, you're moving the entire liquid boundary from A to B. So this is it for a centrifugal pump, energy in, spins the propeller and transfers the energy to the fluid. And here, it moves the boundary of the liquid with a reciprocating pump, a positive displacement pump.
With a centrifugal pump, we have a pump curve and the flow varies according to the system head. So as we close the discharge valve and increase the system head, we get a family of system curves and the flow rate is determined where the system head curve and the pump curve cross. So here, here, and here. With a positive displacement pump, the curve is vertical or very nearly vertical. There is a very small amount of compression. So the flow is constant, whatever the system pressure. So we end up with operating points here, here, and here. Now the maximum possible head with a centrif pump is the closed valve head, there. But the closed valve head with a positive displacement pump is infinite in theory, but in practice, it's whatever the weakest link in the discharge side piping is. 